Hello, everyone, and welcome to Let's Remember Skies of Arcadia. We are in Esperanza, a very sad place, as evidenced by this stray Huskra, who only goes pow, pow. And the somber music. Um, Esperanza is a town uh, devoid of hope. Um, this is one of the most forlorn spaces in the entire game world, besides um, Valua, obviously. But we'll sort of see what the story is behind that in a little bit. All right, so it's just uh, this guy telling us about the Dark Rift, experienced sailor, port town. Um, Esperanza is very interesting to me, um, but I think it is one of these spots in the game where the real big message of, I was going to say there's a cham right down here, <laughs> um, surprise, I kind of know my way around this space again, um, this is sort of a space where the game makes another statement of its, uh, of its thesis again, that whole, um, the thesis, of course, being that nothing is impossible. Um, and it does it in, in a very great way. Uh, I think that what we will discover here... We'll actually use a sylph seed on Vise. And we'll use the Paranta seed as well. Where is it? There we go. Paranta seed. I'm talking out loud. Sacrum crystal to heal everybody up. And we are good to go. Um, but this is a space where people will laugh at our optimism, and I mean like straight up mock us for believing in, in, in something. Um, and we will hopefully have an effect on this space different than the, uh, you know, it won't claim us, we will transform it. Um, it's really great, so we will talk to the tavern keeper. I think we need to talk to this fellow here. This is Don. You're not from around here, are you? So it's just a dead end place. Um, I like this. Skyroof to the east, how do you get through it? And everybody's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Everybody's like, what? Um, but this is what I'm talking about when I talk, talk about Esperanza. It's a, a space where people had dreams, right? And they made their attempts and they failed. This is where dreams go to die. Um, in Valua, you don't even have dreams. <laughs> dreams are stillborn in Valua. Um, here, Dreams have been formed and crushed and turned everyone into incredibly bitter individuals. Dawn being sort of the face of the town for us. Um, they built this city on the edge of the world. You can't go uh, any further. The Dark Rift claims them all. Um, it's fun stuff in its own way of building like a, a sort of mythos for a space, right? You get the sense that Esperanza is this space where dozens upon dozens of people have tried to tackle the Dark Rift and failed, um, right? It's this place where people are used to seeing idiots waltz into town and say that they're going to explore and do these great things and then the world has eaten them alive, right? Um, right? And here's that word, the word that we say that always comes up again. Some things are just impossible, kid. Why don't you go back to where you came from and have your mommy tell you bedtime stories? And we're like, fuck that. I was like, you've thrown your lives away. Like, Vise has none of their bullshit. Before I go, I just, like, he just lays into them. If you lose sight of one dream, replace it with another. Think about how much you could have accomplished in the time you've spent here. 
Just because you couldn't cross the Dark Rift, are you going to sit here for the rest of your life, right? Skies is a game where it's like, okay, you failed. Like, okay, so Skies even... When it approaches the topic of failure, you think for a while that it doesn't approach the topic of failure. We have done a lot of fairly, quote-unquote, impossible things throughout the course of the story, and we're going to keep doing it. But now we enter a space where it's, where it's like, okay, um, people have tried and failed, and the game says, okay, one thing didn't work out. It's not the end of the world. There's a whole big world out there um you should keep on trying and it's fucking great it is fucking great um and then all of a sudden the action escalates really quickly and the armada shows up um so now we have to deal with this which will give us a ship battle with one of my favorite characters of the game that we have only seen, but never really had any interaction with. Um, you would be well forgiven for not even remembering this character when they show up. Um, but it's very exciting stuff. If only because this is also a, a little bit of an arc for Enrique. He has to deal with... facing Valua after he has left it. So this is the flagship of the third admiral, I believe? A second admiral in the fleet, the Origa. This is um, Gregorio, old man Gregorio. Huge armored ship belongs to Admiral Gregorio, nicknamed Iron Wall. Um, it's awesome. This is like, so this is pure pulp stuff here. And the Valuan sh soldiers show up. Sends a message. This, like, this whole section is about two things. It's about Enrique, it, it's about how we face up to certain pa people that we respect and, and how we sort of have them respect our decisions, and then it's also about how we face things that are supposedly impossible. The latter is Vise's challenge in this space. The former is Enrique's challenge. Enrique's challenge is to stand up and say for himself, no, I will not go back. This is wrong. I have made my choice. Um, and Vise's challenge is to say, hey, we are going to do this impossible thing. Everybody says, fuck, oh, good, well, you can't do it. And Vise is like, well, fuck you. I will. And Gregorio is... Uh, uh, sort of like an uncle to Enrique, right? So this is also like... He's not really his uncle, but it's sort of... Um, the closest we get to tackling sort of like differing family issues, not that that's like a big crazy thing, but it's like, okay, so what do you do if someone you respect is on the other side, right? Um, this isn't necessarily a question we've had to ask uh -huh. ourselves through Skies of Arcadia, um, but Gregoria will prove to be a worthy adversary. And this, not quite in the same way that Beleza was. Beleza is an interesting character. Um, who takes things with good grace, but um, Gregorio is an another example of, so I I've called Enrique the best of Valua. Gregorio is a sense of sort of what Valua was in the past, um, right? A relic almost of an age that we can only vaguely get a hint of. So this whole confrontation with Gregorio has a lot of things kind of boiling under the surface which I enjoy to a very large degree um, I think we can just go off to battle I might be wrong though yes so here we go so we're gonna have an airship battle right um, and remember too the important thing here too is like we say Okay, an admiral's there. Okay, he's going to attack 
uh, the town that he's blockaded. If we don't do anything, we have to go stop him. There's no hesitation by our party members. And Don's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Um, and we're like, whatever, we're going to do the best thing. Um, so as I said, all of it ties together. Um, you know, Don is this voice of cynicism the same way that Marco was to some degree, but Don is like cynicism and it's like, Don is like, vi like super washed up Vi's, ignoring the fact that Vi's would never be washed up to begin with. Um, you know, uh, and then with Gregorio, we have um, this issue of of loyalty and what what do we do if we're fighting an enemy who's someone we respect? And like now we're getting to the point where Skies of Arcadia is actually throwing slightly more mature and nuanced looks at things towards us. And then the next section will do it too. And then the end game of the game really fucking does it. Um, I'm rambling a bit, so Vi's. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to see what was beyond the edge of the world. That very edge is right in front of me. I have a chance to do what nobody has ever done before. I have a chance to make history today. But if I said that I'm not scared, I'd be lying. But I won't let this opportunity pass me by. The chance to fulfill my childhood dream lies right in front of me. You don't expect me to give up, do you? Um, it's great. So we keep on reaffirming that message of optimism while also maturing, and a lot of things are happening around me, uh, m maturing our notion uh, of sort of what's happening, right? So value uh -huh. was this broad thing, and now not quite that. Um, not quite that. So now we have the framing for a really great battle, um, both because of the context with... Um, <laughs> Enrique and Gregorio, but then also Esperanza and Don watching what's going to unfold. Um, it sounds funny to say, but this is like one of the scenarios that feels the most real. Um, it's like, hey, we have to do this. Gregorio, my orders were to bring him back alive or kill him if he refuses. We must do everything in our power to take him alive. Gregorio doesn't want to do this. Um, and so the trick with Gregorio is that he is really tough. But as you might imagine, for somebody who is very tough, he is slow. Right? So his ship has this crazy battering ram, and we don't want to get hit by it. So the thing we need to do is to find ways to avoid getting hit by Gregorio. Um, and his sort of spiked wall. Um, but first we have to get rid of this cruiser first. Um, and you can see here I can use certain crew members. So Pow, for instance, uh, raises my chance of attacking first. Pinta protects me from cannon fire for a full turn. Um, Marco doubles all of our spirit points for one turn. Polly will replenish uh, one character's MP to like full, but you can only use them once per battle. So for now, we are okay. So we just, we're gonna work our way through this, right? So it's gonna be like guard, torpedo at the end of the critical round, heading into, um, so actually we're just gonna focus our ass off here and then torpedo into the second round when we hit moon, and then we'll use a moonstone cannon. And we should fuck this ship up pretty quickly. Um, but it's a nice little build up. The Delphinus is not invincible uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but she is a robust ship that we can sort of take advantage of this round to build up to that next round, heal during the first turn of our next um, encounter, and we should be okay. But I like, I like the framing of this battle. I like the personal stakes it has for Enrique. I like the effect it will have potentially on the space of Esperanza. Um, and it's really cool, this, the, just visually too. Um, not, not that these are complicated spaces that we are in, when, that, you know, when we're in airship battles, but the red sky and the sort of rusted ships and the 
darkness of the dark rift um <laughs> a little bit of a redundant statement there the darkness of the dark rift uh, right right before us right um it's really really fascinating to me um and makes for a very nice scenario so we want to use a cannon there just in case but we will heal and then we will if the Moonstone Cannon wasn't enough to take them out in one turn, um, Moonstone Cannon plus Torpedo should certainly be enough. Um, yeah, like, I've gotten to so many points, like, the, the second half of this game, I like the first half of this game quite a bit, but the second half, once you get the Delphinus and everything, really opens up, and there are, things just feel really great. like yeah pretty hard hit <laughs> I don't know if there were any stores in Esperanza to buy things from you would think that I would know all of the little secrets but no it's more a matter of I know my way to get through here it gives us speed wax so that is actually a skill or an item that basically casts quicker on us so like yeah the the town's watching like cheering us on um, like they're watching a show, right? It's awesome. But they're also like, holy shit! Um, but there's something about what's going on that, like, the whole framing of this. Um, and, I, and I've talked about the scenarios and everything, like, and I've always been like, this is cool and this is cool, but I mean, it, this is set piece to set piece to set piece. Skies really offers... Um, things that are interesting on an emotional level or, or to some degree on a phrenic level. Um, so this is a longer section. It's like Gregorio's thing is defense. We need to break through defensive lines. So we are going to save our crew for now. We want to check our items. So gear grease, uh, speed wax, yeah, it improves engine output for a turn, which is basically quicker, um, which is great. But actually, no, this won't be quite what I want. But we'll use uh, advanced cannon guard. Sacrifice to start. I was gonna say none of this is strong enough, so. We do have a crew member that can restore, like, all of our spirit points eventually. And I mean, like, all of them, I believe. Um, she's incredible. She basically turns ship battles. Uh, like, if, if it's like, oh shit, I need Moonstone Cannon. It's like, you use that. And you're pretty set and well off. The game doesn't necessarily even explain the ways that you can use crew members in battle. Um... Which I, I, I said before when showing off Blue Rogues was an oversight, but also perhaps there's something interesting to be said about the way that the obfuscation makes us sort of have to quote-unquote become a captain by sort of figuring out how to work and command our crew. Uh, that that's not anything the game is doing intentionally like that's not that's just a consequence of the ludic right it's not an intention of the ludic um ludic ridiculous thing but it helps explain you know what i'm trying to get at at the very least um here i want to def to get things up quite a bit but i also want to do a fair amount of output if i can so, we'll see how this does. We might have just blown the spirit that we need to use the Moonstone Cannon, but this should be a decent attack regardless. The real challenge of this sequence is Gregorio's flagship. The Origa is a tough son of a bitch, which makes sense. Our main cannon missed, which is rather unfortunate. But we'll sort of roll with it and, and deal with uh, deal with what's go uh, you know going on. Man, I'm having trouble forming that sentence right there. 
but presuming that we get 10 spirit per round, we will be able to use the Moonstone Cannon. And I don't know if it's a consequence of our player action or a decision I have to make, but it might be a decision, and it is possible for me to choose the wrong one. The, the sort of latter half of the game is full of stuff I remember in my head. I remember all of the events pretty clearly, but when it comes to some of the details, I don't know. Um, but we are going to close in and look for an opening. Those bold decisions tend to be the ones that result in us being able to use the marvelous Moonstone Cannon. Um, we'll heal twice just in case, but in theory we have just one for now. Uh, but I, I say that tentatively because, remember, Gregorio's ships are very um, heavily armored, right? Moonstone cannon, fire! But imagine this, too, this prototype ship fighting the Valuant Empire before everybody, the Moonstone cannon firing, and just the people of Esperanza cheering at what's going on. Just, just the, the implicit action that's happening around us is really great. And, and, and the raw emotional value that, that all of that entails is, is, is wonderful. Um, I mean, Skies has done a good job of painting scenarios that we have a lot of reason to care about. Um, the high point of that in the early game and it's so insane that it comes right almost immediately in the early game is the entire first value in sequence when we go to the Colosseum when we are on the train and we rescue Fina that's followed up later on and not, not just with the encounters with the Gigas but also with the um, the emotional value of our interaction with Drachma. Um, so, the entire scenario of hunting down Rocknum and sort of everything that happened there, like, it paints a lot of these very strong moments, and we participate in them in different ways. Um, obviously, combat is the major way that we participate, but we didn't even really have combat in that moment with um, with Rocknum, when Ramirez shot down the Little Jack, we had a little bit of engagement with the overworld map where we could, you know, just sort of try and find... But we were just trying to find Rocknum by sound. Um, and there's some design things there that aren't great because you can still get into random encounters, but it's still the game is setting up all of these wonderful sort of scenarios that have uh, emotionally impactful uh, um, significance, which might sound like the most vapid term in the world, emotional impactful significance. But what I mean by that is that the situations are just properly contextualized in a way that we really care about what's going on. Um, so here, I mean, I do care what's happening here, and not just because I care about the characters in the space, um, but I care about what Skyus has done to contextualize the, the this point of the narrative. Which then, the narrative complements how interesting it is to use the combat system in this game. And it imbues the combat system with a certain emotional quality. Um, you know, I'm watching my HP, I, 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 I have to, in the next battle, I'm going to need to find ways to dodge Gregorio's attacks. Um, it also feels very frantic, but also there's um, a, a absolute quality of emotional excitement to it um, that is really great. And this is sort of the watershed proving moment for Vise as a captain as well, too. This is our first real battle since we've gotten the Delphinus. And so Vise needs to prove his sort of worth 
as a captain very quickly. Which is also another thing that gives this moment um, interesting things. And then also Gregorio sort of having this feeling of true regret for what's going on. Um, it's wonderful. Uh, I, it's, you know, I say that so simply, but it, it is very, very enjoyable. Um, and if we need to, we have Pinta to use later. Uh, but for now, advanced cannon, but we heal at the beginning. And then also uh, just defend. Actually, no, focus. Because in the upcoming rounds, we are going to want to use Quicka. We are also going to want to use the uh, the item that we had before. Because Gregorio will ram us. And he's also... This is a, this is an, a tough one because it is... It, this is a tactically deeper sort of engagement with an enemy ship than I think we've had in the past, necessarily. Uh, certainly the battle with Beleza and the Lynx is up there because that's our sort of first introduction to how sub-cannons and torpedoes work. But here, like, everything's at our disposal. There's, there's a separate sort of semi-mechanic of making sure our, our, our ship is past a certain speed threshold to dodge Gregorio's ramming. Um, this, I think, really represents some of Skies of Arcadia's best moments in terms of airship combat. So... That second round where we see the red, uh, yeah, I want to avoid that. So I'm going to do a couple things. I, I'm going to continue to attack, but I am go. Uh, I, I am going to. Um, that's not the button I want. It's the speed wax. Yes. We are going to heal. And then we are going to defend at the end of the turn. So this is actually a very smart turn. And in theory, I will have done well enough to dodge the incoming charge. Um, the player doesn't usually know that that's something that's happening. They assume the red square is just uh, a danger square in terms of maybe, say, difficult you know, rounds where they focus a lot of their multiple cannons or something, but admirals tend to have certain weaponry available to them. De Loco did, for instance. Um, we will get into an airship battle with Vigoro, and his ship will have its own sort of uh, challenges for us to overcome. As I said before, we have not seen the last of Vigoro by any means. And it's good that we also took the time, like, I could have just gone straight to Crescent Isle with all the money I had and upgraded it and then gone straight to Esperanza, but I needed to build up um, <laughs> I needed to build up the um, <laughs> I'm coughing, so like that's messing with my brain. I, I, I needed to make sure that we had some weaponry, too. Um, so if we can, we'll launch a torpedo as well. Um, and defend, defend. So Quicka to dodge what will come. And I sort of miscalculated how I was using the... Uh, the item, but we want to keep ourselves buffed as much as possible, and then we'll go from there. I mean, it'd be nice to use Increm, but it's really about, okay, he's going to ram us, we dodge, that has him sort of quote-unquote off-balance, right? And then we can attack with a Moonstone Cannon. I'm rambling a bit as I go through this battle. Um, I wish that I could sit back sometimes and have really deeper, insightful things to say about Skies' combat. Skies's? Skies combat. You can see that I'm already sort of in a scattered mind frame uh, because I'm focusing sort of on what's happening, but uh, the big thing is I find 
that watching the combat play out tends to sort of have it speak for itself. So we used Quicka, so he will miss something that you don't know the first round, necessarily. Um, although in theory you could have used Quicka uh, with, without knowing. So enemy vessel is wide open, Moonstone Cannon. We will keep on using magic to sort of heal, but we will advance cannon and then um, focus at the end. So this is another strong round. Brought about because I'm intimately... Oh, this, I, I, I said before I wasn't... In, I'm losing my, my train of thought. I don't remember what I said before. I used the word intimate in some context with the game. Um, I do intimately remember this battle, to be sure. Um, uh, I don't have the clearest recollection of some things in this game. This was a moment that stuck with me. So, I mean, I remember the tactics. I remember exactly what I have to do. And so, along with the torpedo, that's about half damage. So we just need to manage ourselves wisely and sort of fire again. Um, there's a lot of fallback in this game on special techniques and special weapons, which I think is sort of a weakness of the combat system because it doesn't necessarily encourage diversity in action. But what it does do is it, it gives you a clear goal to work towards that you then sort of adjust your tactics around. So it's like I shuffle around the way my characters are behaving in order to build up into large bursts of action. So it's, it's preparation and then completely dynamic sort of explosion, right? So in this case, we do a lot of preparation in the airship battle to get into the positions that we want, and then we sort of take advantage of that by... Uh, I suppose, you know, the moments we take advantage of that are these big explosive moments. So it's like action for ship battles in particular sort of shrinks, pulls itself closer together, closer together, draws you close, invites you close, and then BAM! Snaps outward! Which I find very, very exciting. Um, and it gives these battles a, a very unique pace and that pace oscillates to some degree you know that that wavelength that we are on that represents sort of our engagement during each encounter oscillates depending on the minor tactical changes that we have to take into account based upon what enemy we are encountering like what admiral or what other type of ship but still it it's draw you in draw you in build 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 and then release right um and there's something, there's something to be said about that, that I think is really well done on Sky's part. Like, incredibly well done and competently uh, achieved. Um, so we'll do this. Hard hitting round, focus at the start. Second round, we use Quicka. We will dodge the ram and we will really do well right because all I'm doing right now is obviously I'm building focus to prepare for the action that will come after I've used Quicka which will is, is you know Moonstone Cannon but I'm also taking advantage of the critical turns that I have the sort of chance turns to do essentially in this battle at least um, chip damage to just edge Gregorio a little bit closer over the line so that when I do get to that moment of big expansion, I I can just hit him and, and seal the fate of the battle. And when you pull off these things, you feel a sort of tactical satisfaction. Right? There's a, there's a sort of really good feeling about it. Like, just even positioning myself and doing the sub cannon plus main cannon attack there did a decent amount of damage and the lead up to that was all it was like focus 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 attack which um is phenomenal and so we can set up again at the end of the turn for this 
and I think we could even, in theory, yes we can. We can use Increm. So Quicka, Increm, Focus, Torpedo, into Moonstone Cannon, boom, done. I will say when I was younger, and I didn't fully, uh, or at least the first time I played this game, um, I didn't quite understand what was necessary to deal with Gregoria's ramming attack. And when he attacks, it does a ton of damage, and you can't outheal it. So, so you you have to outperform it, right? So, I admit to losing this battle like once or probably twice the first time I did this, and then you just sort of figure it out. Um, you know. And they give you some context clues of like, okay, he's ramming us, we have to find a way to move faster than him and things, and then you sort of think, you know, what do I have in my catalog that can do that? But, you know, sometimes you're just like, okay, this is sort of challenging, how do I deal with it? And I think this is, um, you know, we get a ramming action there, right? And you're not quite sure how to deal with it and then, and then you sort of figure it out. Um, and it's really edifying, and just because I'm a total bastard, I'm going to use a sub-cannon into that round with the Moonstone Cannon and the Torpedo, and we are going to end this fucking fight. Freaking awesome. Right? I've been, like, this whole fight has been rambling. My, that's what this series is by now. I think you've noticed um, it is me rambling. Um, and sadly, I, I am all files in my head with no cabinets. There's no organizational system through which my thoughts are filtered. Um, at any given time, I have like nine different things going on in my head that I want to consider. Um, and they just mesh, and that's like, that's why sometimes when I talk, like, I stumble over my words because my head is just going so far ahead of me because there's so much I want to talk about when it comes to this game or to games in general or just like maybe how I'm feeling emotionally in the moment. I, I'm talking so much right now, I didn't even look at the rewards I got from the fucking battle, right? Um, but that's what this experience is. Skies is this thing where it's just really exciting. Um, and we build up to this moment, which is... You know, the end of this small miniature arc for Enrique, which is nice. And it's that notion again of, you know, I thought I would be fighting by your side, but instead, uh, I'm fighting against you. I know that you've noticed uh, what's going on, but the thing is that Gregorio is somebody who serves his country through and through. Um, Enrique is somebody who doesn't quite have that same sense. You know, he has the ability to change things, and so he will. Gregorio sort of stays within the old structures and doesn't quite know how to disentangle himself from them because he spent so much time in them. But, you know, he doesn't, like, he respects um, Enrique's decision. Enrique is the best of what Valua can offer. Gregorio is what Valua was in days gone past. Right? And this, like, and this is the, the second arc of everybody just being, like, of somehow bringing some hope back to a space so hope is a word that's come up <laughs> that's come up jesus my words that's a weird one for sure um this is a a notion that's come up so many times during this playthrough of hope or hopelessness or anything and in this game we get to bring hope to a space which is fantastic um, I want to equip the Delphinus with what I may or may not have gotten. Um, I don't know what they all were. Oh boy. Oh, one of them's a heavy, heavy deck, so we can 
Which one? Armor deck is less, so we can use the heavy armor deck. So now our ship's a little tougher. Um, and we want to use the captain's stripe as well to upgrade her while we are at it. I will go into Esperanza. Um, where's the friggin' captain's stripes? We have two. I don't remember where the other one's from. I will go into Esperanza to see if there are any items that I might be able to buy. Because I love showing off uh, buying things so much. But also, I want to see if it is possible this early on. Um, you might have guessed it. I can recruit Dawn into my crew, but I'm not sure if I'm able to do it yet. It might be after I come back to this space later on. Um, but I might be able to do it now. Dawn is another potential helmsman for us. I don't use him often, because I tend to enjoy using uh, Lawrence instead. But I can sort of check and see if we can recruit Dawn. I mean, I have my preferred crew. In theory, I could just pick up them, but I want I want everybody. So I can come here and... If you guys get through the Dark Rift and make it back again, I'll start sailing again. Okay. Fine by me. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that task ahead of us, I am going to end the episode here. We will explore the Dark Rift, see what's on the other side, in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I love you very much. Bye.